down below, like they said, there was just a small room made even smaller by bookshelves stuffed with old registries lining the walls. The lack of light and space made it kind of hard to breathe. It wasn't the kind of space I'd want to stay for long. The strangest thing is, right, is that Sumika, we first met her after we were already here in this strange different place. Itsuki, I'm pretty sure we met him like at the actual school, you know, when we were like preparing for the miniature festival. Same goes for Ayana as well. Ryo, not so much. We only no, we actually saw her before, right? In the in that particular open space, the garden. So maybe, yeah. So Sumika actually is the only one that we've first ever saw in this weird, strange place. So it kind of makes sense now that I think about it that her registry would not be here during this particular year of the school. That, that either means that she's dead, meaning she may have died last year during the whole miniature festival thing, you know? Or she quit school. There, there are multiple reasons, but at least according to the registry, she's not supposed to be at this school. She's not part of the school anymore. She's not a student there anymore. Itsuki handed a file to me. Ayana and I scanned through it. Oh man. Shibaya Sumika. I couldn't find that name anywhere amongst the first years. Our school didn't have that many students to begin with. It was unlikely. We just all missed it somehow. But if she's a first year, that means that last year she wasn't even part of the school. How do we know her then? Unless I'm misremembering, I feel like when we first saw her, we were actually kind of familiar with her, right? I mean, maybe we knew her from, let's say, before moving to the school. Like, you know, uh, what, what's the junior high? Is junior high before high school? I think so, in America at least. Let's check second and third years just in case too. She definitely didn't give the vibe of an uh, upperclassman. And I would have known if she was somehow in the same year as us. But still... Hmm. I looked through every name, but I couldn't find her. Hmm. Ayana let out a confused grunt. What is it? What? What does that mean? Huh? Now that she mentioned it, I saw it too. I checked Itsuki's name that was just nearby, but there was nothing like that next to his. Uh oh, does that mean I was supposed to be the next target to die? What about Ayana? Huh. Yours is crossed out too. Oh, what? Okay, that's strange. If one person's was crossed out, at least you could kind of say like, okay, he's the one that's supposed to die. But if multiple people are crossed out, but one person that is also here, his name is not crossed out, Itsuki, then why is our names crossed out? Like if Itsuki's name was crossed out too, we could just kind of say like, okay, that means that we were the selected students to be brought here, perhaps? But Itsuki isn't crossed out, so why is he not and we are? Ayana's name was crossed out in the same way as mine. I looked around for Komiya's name, but I couldn't find her either. We continued to the third years, but, but with just as little luck. Komiya's name isn't there either. True, that is a valid alibi as far as we know, if we can believe her. Which I feel like we can, but you never know. I see. Like, this whole environment just makes you want to doubt people, you know? Well, I guess that was reasonable. Still, what did those red lines mean? Only mine and Ayana's name were crossed out too. I wonder what those red lines mean. They wouldn't be marking those that'll have to repeat a year, would they? <laughs> Exactly, Ayana is a perfect model student. There's no way she would be held back a year. Yeah. I didn't do anything to warrant a repeating a year either. At least to my knowledge. 
Sumika no namae wa. What? You found Sumika's name? Komiya interrupted our small talk. That file looks pretty old. The file Komiya held out was of the establishment year. She opened a page with student names and handed it to me. I found a name in question right away. And it was crossed out with a red line, slightly faded due to its age, but otherwise just like ours. Oh fuck, I'm getting goosebumps. Is that really her? Not just someone with the same name? True. Yeah, I don't know why they would do that either. But Yana couldn't find an answer. Shibaya-san,隠されていたコミヤさんが見つけたメモ。I I mean, I think the red line means that they, those are the people that are supposed to die. But, so that means me and Ayana are supposed to die this year. But, but like, okay, so according to that file, she was here many years ago, she, she by as a, as a student. Sumika, so why is she still here? Do, do the people that actually like die, do they get trapped here in this particular version of the school or something? There was a hint of anxiety in Ayana's voice. True? Anyone can forget things. Yeah, but for us it's like a specific reason. It's not just like, oh, we forgot it, you know? Of course you forget stuff, but... I feel like the stuff that we've forgotten is due to it's a forced forgetting you know <laughs> that's a strange way of putting it but it's not like we just it's just a random f thing that we've forgotten it's something that we were sort of forced to forget maybe either by ourselves our brain sort of forced us upon it uh, forced it upon us or or anything like that due to probably the traumatic experience <laughs> True. That was right. One could still argue on Ayana's case, but mine was obviously unnatural. And if it was precisely that which stopped both Sumika and me from bringing it up, people couldn't question things they wouldn't notice. At least, I didn't realize there was anything strange with me, somehow not possessing the memories of our meeting. This situation, I don't know, man. Like, I was before, I was actually really suspicious of Itsuki, but I feel like maybe he's just really that fucking into this shit that all he fucking cares about is just figuring out about the mysteries and that's the only thing that sort of makes him happy or excited or whatever you know he's just that much of a freak who's into the occult stuff that he's actually just not scared of it because i feel like he's kind of helping us unravel the mystery right like sure he is guiding us in one particular direction which could just be part of his plan sending us in the wrong direction to you know uh, brush away suspicion off of himself, but I don't think that that's the case. It could be the case, but I don't know. I'm actually starting to believe him a lot and doubting him less. Mm. He's, he's just probably that much of a fucking nutter, you know? Still... If that was the case, then how come the school knows about it? What do those red lines crossing out our names mean? I think so too. What if like the 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 old principal somehow died and the old principal wants sacrifices from the school every single year? So the new principal has to choose uh, some students to sacrifice 
to give to the old principal. <laughs> I don't know, but it kind of feels like that. Like they're just handpicking a couple of students. They're just like, alright, you're fucking gonna die this year. Itsuki continued with a smile on his face. Whoa. By... What do you mean by from getting you into it? Like, the school actually planned us to get us to into this school? How would they do that? If that's the case, then what for? Experiment? Experiment? I gave Komiya a look. True, the narcotic. Komiya pulled out that old note from her bag. The mystery takes the dead violated by the narcotic into its prison. Such is the root of the horror. How would that be related? What if this is just a freaking giant drug trial for human experiments? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm grasping at straws here, man. Komiya returned the note to her bag and proceeded to the exit. Itsuki followed after her. Hmm. Ayana and I couldn't move right away. What? I don't know, but if... If what Itsuki says is right, if it's correct, then I don't think we have gotten ourselves into anything. They have gotten us into this shit. Because if that's the case, then the school planned everything for us, right? Even up to the point for us to join the school and everything that's happening right now, for us to be in this situation. So then it's not even our own fault. I couldn't answer. It all happened out of nowhere, and all we did was look for a way out, with no idea what was going on whatsoever. But I felt we were getting deeper into this with every moment. A conspiracy by the school itself. Did someone behind the shadows want us dead? Why? What have we done to deserve this? Yeah? What? You're just randomly bringing this up, Ayana? I already said that's ridiculous! I don't... No, 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 stop! 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 Please! Ayana? You're getting fucking crazy again, please! Put those eyes away! Go back to your normal eyes, please Ayana, I'm begging you! Ayana! あすなりだって印があったんだから共犯だよ。きっと共犯だから一緒に忘れてるんだよ。一緒に死ぬんだよ。そうなんだよ。スミカちゃんだって。<laughs> Ayana, please calm the fuck down. Ayana. <laughs> Calling out her name seemed to bring her back to reality. When she gets on this like sort of fucking train of thought where I don't know, she's just relentless, she won't stop. Once that, that idea of like, oh shit, I killed, and then it just comes fucking rallying out, 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 I killed this and one, this and that, and then and, and we're all just fucking screwed, out, out, we're all gonna die, boom, dead. I guess she'd regain her calm only temporarily, and any sort of trigger could send her back into that rambling state. Alright, we gotta try our best not to trigger her, but I'd never seen her react like this to anything before. <laughs> What? <gasps> I whirled around in response to Itsuki's startling words. Itsuki, did you seriously just say that? I mean, it's entirely possible that... I, I don't know who would do this though, but like people who have gotten away with criminal acts somehow are being punished in this way. 
Like, you know, if, if you think you've murdered someone and gotten away with it, like, whew, alright, I guess I won't have to deal with that. But then somehow, somebody finds out, and you're being brought here as a punishment. I don't know. <laughs> There's a time and place for jokes. You know that, right? What? Huh? The next moment, my eyes flared in burning pain. <gasps> I stepped back, hitting my back against the bookshelf, and slid down to the ground, unable to concentrate on standing due to the pain. Was that pepper spray? <laughs> what? I could feel Ayana crouch next to me, but it hurt too much to react. Did he fucking throw pepper spray in my face? What? I couldn't open my eyes. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> What the hell is going on? Ayana-chan, Sure, one is called fuck, the second is you. Fuck you, Itsuki. I listened to the two talk, fighting against the pain. What was going on here? What did Ayana's parents have to do with this? Sakura, Miho, to Ushihisa. Ayana answered him in a hesitant tone. This is what I fucking get for saying, like, Oh, I trust him now, I trust Itsuki now, and after that he immediately fucking tries to stab me in the back. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Revenge? Revenge? It was really fucking him. Uh, strange is not the fucking word I'd use to describe this shit. The pain had abated to the level I could speak comprehendingly. I couldn't open my eyes. <laughs> you fucking knows everything. Were they drugs dealers or something? What? I mean, drugs help many people, right? Itsuki snorted. What do you want? What? Why would you want to kill Ayana? Oh, I felt Itsuki's presence leave the room. Why the hell did he even assault me if he wasn't going to do anything? Idiot! It's dangerous to go outside on your own right now! I'm gonna be alright. It'll pass soon. Ayana let out a small gasp in response to my words. I didn't know whether the story about Sumika wanting to hurt Ayana was true, but as long as the possibility wasn't nil. Sumika... We never figured out what she was about. Why was a student from an old registry here? I just mean, I think it's an old soul that's just still here in this place. Drugs, mysteries, Ayana's parents, the miniature festival. Were all these things related somehow? I mean, they, they have to be, obviously. I wondered if there was a hint in the memories Ayane had lost. I was finally able to open my eyes and stood up. Oh, yeah, everything's a bit blurry, but I can see, and it's kind of what it's like for me without glasses. 
I guess he didn't lie about it not working for long. Still, I wasn't confident that I could walk just yet. I wonder where Komiya is. Okay, so what we know for certain, we can't trust Itsuki, and I don't think we can trust Sumika. But I don't know about Ryo though. Like, I feel like she's indeed, she's just probably acting on her own. I don't think she's connected to any, any of those two. Yeah. So, the only person I know I can count on is Ayana. It's just me and Ayana. I hope Itsuki didn't get up to more nonsense somewhere outside. Itsuki... I thought he was acting strange. But who could have guessed he had some sort of crazy scheme in his head? Well, I thought so before, but then I thought he was... Because he helped us sort of reveal Sumika's... I guess, you know, true, uh, that she wasn't a real student here, or at least not anymore. So I thought, like, okay, we can kind of trust him now, right? Because he's, it seems like he's solely just acting this weird, because he actually wants to figure out what the fuck is going on here. But nope, he fucked us over right after I changed my mind. Like, fuck that guy. I wonder if it was him who locked us all in here then. Did he get close to us just for this day? But wait, he said something up about finding proof or whatnot, and that he was doing it for revenge. Was he like Komiya? Investigating this thing out of his own will. I wonder what I should do now. I had to protect Ayana, of course, but I felt that at this point, leaving this place was no longer the only thing I had to worry about. Itsuki mentioned something about revenge, too. I had no idea what that was about, but if Itsuki was getting some weird ideas in his head, it was my responsibility to stop him. Who fucking needs parents when I got you, Ayana? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I haven't. Of course I have, but my relatives would get angry if I said that. Yeah, they said that they abandoned me, so I should just forget all about despicable people like that. What if that's just an excuse though? Both my foster mother and father were good people, mind you. They took care of me as though I was their own and I never lacked for anything as far as material things were concerned. They just didn't like me to speak about my real parents, as though they wanted for their very existence to disappear. So naturally, I grew to avoid the subject as well. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. If they're alive... Yeah, e even if you killed them yourself, Ayana, I'm just kidding. I mean, it's probably still what happened for real, but the way she made it sound back then, right? When, in that flashback thing, when she was still a little girl, it sounded like she was protecting me. So, you know, if, if she killed her parents to protect me, I gotta be at least thankful for that, right? I mean, there's gotta be a fucking good reason why someone would kill their own parents to protect a friend of theirs, right? You don't just do that for fun or it's just like, ah, whatever. It's some- you gotta have a fucking good reason for that. Even though we don't know it, I, I still wanna believe in Ayane. I wanna believe in at least one person, okay? I wanna believe in one person in this entire fucking story and I, I hope Ayana is that person. I just feel like she has to be. She's my childhood friend. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. Hmm. 
ほら小学校の作文でお父さんとお母さんのお仕事について書きなさいって作文。Oh yeah. <laughs> Poor Ayane, she just had to、uh, leave that、uh, answer blank. What do your parents do? Oh shit, I don't know. What do they do? Yeah. I just wrote about what my foster father did. I just wrote about what my foster father did. I just wrote about what my foster father did. You mean they kept everything related to their work out of the house? So, I don't know. So, I don't know. Despite the nature of the memory, Ayane nonetheless looked like she was reminiscing over something treasured. I don't know. 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 I see. When she looked at it, it seemed like both her and my parents had lots of things shrouded in mystery. I feel like it has to be connected somehow as well, right? Otherwise, my memory wouldn't also be gone. We're similar in the weirdest senses. Ayana made a small smile. I felt as though the heavy air had lightened a tad. オリモト君は私の両親の死因は知らなかったけど、何をしていたのかは知ってるみたいだった。あは、he knows he knows a lot about her parents, but he wants for some reason he wants proof, exact proof, and he wants to know why and how her parents died. That's what he wants to know. He says that he kind of needs that information, and without it, he's not entirely sure. Yeah. It definitely came off that way. I remembered how he made that derisive snort when Ayane brought up the nature of her parents' work. I don't know, man. Do you really even want to? だって、折本君が復讐だって言ってたのだって、私の両親が関係してるんだよね。I mean, part of me is thinking like you forgot it for a reason, right? So why would you want to remember it? But it kind of is really closely connected to our current situation, so we might need to remember it even if we don't want to. Yeah, I think there was no doubt about that, at least. That's why he told me to protect Ayana, and protect her I will. He probably figured there was an answer to something in her memories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I've known him for quite a while, and thought of him as a friend. He might have something against Ayana. But that didn't automatically cancel all this time we spent together. Anyway, I think I can move already. Let's go outside and see how the others are doing. <laughs> we could finally leave this musty room. As we emerged from the stairs, we found a corridor completely silent, with not a soul around. At this point, I could tell neither where anyone was, nor what they were doing, or why. Yana, I'm sorry, but can I just wash my face before before we continue? Gotta wash out the spices of the pepper spray. Oh, yeah, that's right. We proceeded towards the washroom, carefully looking around us. I mean, we gotta be so careful now. I wonder what we can what we can really do about your memories. I rejoined Ayana after washing my face. From her unstable behavior, it seemed like she was remembering things, but it was nothing concrete on the conscious level. And I didn't know how、uh, didn't know much about psychology or counseling. I know, I know how we're gonna get her memories back. 
We just fucking need Kiyotaka to work his Dream Sphere magic in this situation. Boom! But yeah, maybe Ryo can help us. I feel like that's the only person we can maybe count on, right? And the thing is, like, we gotta be a bit careful of everybody now. Like, I think it's pretty safe to say that we should just steer the hell away from Itsuki and Sumika. But Komiya Ryo... I don't know, she's kind of like a 50-50 play. Like, she has a knife, so she could potentially be dangerous. But I feel like she would be on our side, at least... If she is on that 50-50 and she doesn't know which side to pick, I'm gonna try my best to get her on my side, you know? I need more people, no matter what. I need all the help I can get. She had been- wait, was I supposed to say that? Uh, what was it? She had been acting extremely anxious ever since that weird fit she had in front of me. And after having a conversation with Komiya while I was discussing the mysteries. Wait, that was not it. This one. Uh, yeah, now that I think about it, you started looking a lot better after talking with Komiya back in the science room. Oh yeah. And then after having a conversation with Komiya while I was discussing the mysteries, she instantly got over it. Indeed. Like, what did they talk about? And she said... Komiya said that she was talking to Ayana about her parents too. Like, it seems like such a touchy subject that you wouldn't bring up with someone, even if you knew about it, right? Even if you knew about somebody's parents dying from an outside source? It's not something you would bring up with a person while having a two-minute conversation with them, right? Yeah? Right. Really? That, that makes it seem like she knows what those things are. Like people sort of freaking out. Like it's happened multiple times. Two times now to Ayana, maybe three. Once definitely to Sumika, or maybe twice. I think once. A Ayana suddenly fell silent. Something wrong? Um, huh? I don't think so. Before? Have I said anything like that before? I remember. I did remember consoling her more than once in the past, but. そうだよ。私だからその言葉ですごく安心したんだと思う。リオちゃんの言葉は偶然かもしれないけど。Did that mean I also lacked memories from my past, but was just not aware of it? If it really happened, it was many years ago. There was nothing strange in me forgetting a few details. Though from the way Ayana phrased it, it didn't seem like it was something I said randomly without thinking too much about it. Let's keep an eye out for Komiya. I'm curious about what she's up to. And there's also the deal with this drug or whatnot, and figuring out why the school would do this to us. Komiya was investigating this place from the inside, so it's likely there's something here. Yeah. Deciding on our course of action, we started moving. Oh really? Huh? Oh, you're right. I glanced at the window to see night finally stretching across the sky that refused to abandon its orange glow for so long. Our time limit was today. If we couldn't figure out the situation, we'd have no tomorrow. The darkness outside stirred the anxiety in my heart. What does that mean? Carefully looking around ourselves, since we didn't know where anyone was, we proceeded to the second floor. But why is it suddenly- why- before it felt like time was just still, right? Like from the sky? If you were to just look at the sky, it seemed like time was not moving at all. But now it's getting dark. Does time only change after we've- like, you know, there are certain checkpoints, for example, we would need to reach in order for time to sort of pass because we only have a limited amount of time at this place. Or at least until the end of the day. 
Like, if this pl if time moves different in this place, you can say like, yeah, on your clock you have 6 hours. But sometimes an hour is an hour here, and sometimes 1 minute is 10 hours here, if you know what I mean, you know? There is no concrete thing of time here, as far as I can tell. Because sometimes it feels like it's standing still, and now it's moving, and then it's not- I don't know what the fuck is going on here, okay? Sumika was after Ayana, apparently. I could feel neither the presence nor hear voices of anyone, but that didn't mean we should let our guard down. Hmm? It was when we passed by the science room. There seemed to be some viscous red spots on the floor. Oh no, please don't be blood, please don't be blood. Wait, was that... Ayana, wait a second. It's gotta be ketchup, right? I heard Ayana take a gasp behind my back. Please just be ketchup. I slowly drew closer and checked the red spots. Just as I thought. Those were blood, oh my god. I mean, I've kind of expected death and blood to occur much, much earlier into the story. But it's here. It's fucking here right now. They stretch from the signs room to the stairs. So far? I guess that meant there was something in the signs room that originated this phenomenon. Praying that it was only an accident of someone getting a nosebleed or something. This large of a fucking nosebleed? He must have seen the biggest pairs of boobs in his entire life for him to get a nosebleed like that, okay? What? I stepped into the room, and... <gasps> I spotted it right away. What the fuck is it? On the table in the middle of the room, there was Sumika lying motionless in a pool of blood. The stab wound on her chest was enough to tell what had happened to her. Sumika! She was stabbed? I rushed to her side. But as I, sh as I should have known, she showed no reaction. No sign of being alive. Come on, I want to see an image of her fucking being stabbed. <laughs> Entering the room after hearing my voice, Ayana also spotted the gruesome sight and let out a small scream. Sumika! <sighs> She rushed to her side with a scream, but soon realized that Sumika was not breathing anymore. I don't know. Like, you would think Itsuki would be the one who did it, but as far as we know, only... Ryo has a knife, and she got stabbed, meaning it, she was killed by a knife. But it could also be that Itsuki took the knife from Ryo. I don't fucking know, it could be either of those. I don't know. She was acting really strange when she ran away. So we can't rule out the possibility of suicide either. Though that possibility was pretty low, given a trail of blood stretching outside the room. But then it was not beyond the realm of possibility that an unknown third party who had been hiding up until now has caused this too. That's indeed also still a possibility. I remembered how Itsuki was acting earlier. Still, what did anyone stand to gain from killing her? Did Sumika do something after she started acting weird? Or was someone looking for a chance to take her life from the very start? I feel like, considering, uh, according to my theory at least, she is sort of an older soul or older body that is trapped here. Maybe she would have answers, more answers that is valuable to us, therefore Whoever is in charge of this probably wanted her to die the moment they realized that Sumika was starting to remember stuff. I analyzed the situation with a strange sense of calmness. What I wanted most of all right now was not to waste time on being scared or heartbroken, but get out of this insane situation. I don't know. Ayana clung to my arm, her voice trembling and tired. We should keep looking for the other two. Unable to figure out a good way to calm her, I just proceeded to, the, to exit the room as fast as I could. Perhaps we didn't have time to investigate things at our own pace at this point. Man... Sumika is dead. As if guided by the track of blood, we proceeded upstairs in silence.
the trail continued there. I thought it came from the weapon that stabbed Sumika. But maybe it was possible that the culprit himself got hurt somehow when it all went down. I wonder if it had actually been a fight. <laughs> Suddenly, Ayana called out my name. What is it? We sure saw something fucked up. You want a break? <laughs> huh? What was this? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I mean, usually with amnesia or things that you've forgotten, right? Memories that you've forgotten, they tend to... It's more more likely for them to, to come back to you if you see scenarios or, or anything that rem that's similar to the, to the memories that you've forgotten. So for example, the memories that we think Ayana has forgotten has to do something with murder, death, people dying, right? Her parents dying, she killed them. So now that she saw Sumika dead, blood, pool of blood, you know, murdered, that might just like trigger her amnesia like suddenly remember as to what has happened back then. For example? What? She gave me an anxious look. To confess, I wasn't sure anymore. Damn, she was probably close to having another breakdown. Ayana, calm down for now. You're the only person I can count on. Please do not have an emotional breakdown again, okay? <laughs> Come on, what did I just say, girl? Listen to me! <sighs> to, my, uh, to my attempt at consolation, she reacted with an ear-piercing scream. <sighs> what? What? She's remembering. You were acting fine even though mom died because of us. What? Huh? Ayana opened her eyes wide, rendered speechless by her own words. Her parents died because of us? I could see her growing more confused by the second. What? Aya... Ah! Ow! My ears! She clutched her head and fell to her knees, shaking. Ayana! I rushed to her side, but I had no idea what I was supposed to do when she was having this kind of a violent fit. Did we kill her parents? Is that what this is about? Did she remember something after seeing Sumika? I had no way of telling what was going on in her mind right now. What? What the fuck? We really did do that? I wanted to say it was nothing, that she was just imagining things. But being unable to even understand half of what Ayana said, I felt like it wasn't my place to approach her with cheap consolation. Why didn't I remember whatever memory was doing this to her? Why couldn't I remember anything that could save her? There was no way it was like she said. Right? I don't know. That's the most confusing part, right? If two people are at a similar event, 
they should remember the exact same thing. They should both remember it. They should both know it. But for some reason, I don't. Like, okay, before we both didn't know about it at all. But she has gotten her memory back. Why haven't I? I couldn't answer. I... The fuck is that? Please, no. School announcement thingamajiggy? As I stood motionless, the school speaker sounded a broadcast alarm. Rio! Rio! That was Komiya's voice. I felt like it lacked its usual spirit. Ayana was still on the ground, but it seemed like she was at least listening to it too. Okay. Medicine, probably the narcotics uh, that that the the note was referring to. Miniature festival and medicine. Those two seem like the key words. What? What do you mean the school might have been watching? Like, is this building alive? Does it have eyes? So then this situation was caused by the school after all? In that case, was it smart to be using speakers like this? Yeah, everybody in this fucking building is hearing this right now, right? Really? Why has it suddenly become possible to leave now? What? Huh? I walked to the closest window and tried sliding it aside. Ah, oh, it opened like it was nothing. Beyond it, the sky was already almost completely taken by darkness. Oh! See, that's kind of what I, I, I think I mentioned something similar like that. Like time was standing still until someone died. And that means that, you know, remember when we were like actually walking up the stairs to the second floor? We already noticed it was dark outside. So that must mean at that point, Sumika was already dead. I mean, we kind of found her afterwards. Of course, she was kind of already dead. But it seems like the moment Sumika died, time has started to move again. It started to tick again. And now we're suddenly not locked in here anymore. So we were really just fucking locked in here until somebody died? I looked around, but I still couldn't find a single student outside. What? <gasps> the broadcast ended with Itsuki's voice. Why the fuck is Itsuki there too? I don't trust that motherfucker. Was he with Komiya? I didn't have a good feeling about this. Oh hell no. I had to get Ayana back to her senses and go to the fountain as soon as possible. But then I finally noticed that something was not right. Ayana! She was nowhere in sight! What the fuck? How did she escape? How did she just run away? I started to run. I shouldn't have let my guard down and let her out of my sight. It was most likely she was heading to the fountain too. But I didn't want to leave her all on her own in that state. Where the fuck is she? 